Are you struggling with peeling and redness and irritation no matter how carefully you introduce retinoids? What if I told you the problem might not be your skin at all, but your gut? I'm a registered nutritionist specializing in skin health. And by the end of this video, you'll understand how your gut health influences your skin's tolerance to retinoids and the steps you can take to fix it. First up, what are retinoids? So retinoids are derivatives of vitamin A. They come in lots of different forms in skincare, the most powerful of which is the prescription strength tretinoin. Now skincare enthusiasts swear by it because it is one of the few ingredients that's actually proven to work. Retinoids are like a multi-tool for your skin. They boost cell turnover, they help to clear skin, they smooth out fine lines and they even out texture. Oh, and they unclog pores. The problem is because they are so powerful, they can also be quite irritating. And some of us experience what's known as the retinoid uglies and that's when your skin becomes red or irritated or peeling or flaky when you use them in your skincare routine. Now we're typically told to dial down our use of retinoids when this happens or just to simply moisturize more. But what if your skin's sensitivity isn't just about retinoids being too strong for you? What if the root cause runs deeper, literally inside your gut? So here's what I've noticed working with clients. Some people think retinoids just aren't for them, but when we start working on supporting and enhancing their gut health, they find they can tolerate retinoids on their skin after all. Now, I remember one lady in particular because she was in her late 50s and she thought that she couldn't even tolerate the weaker forms of retinoids found in drugstore skincare. She'd literally been trying for years and she kept giving up because she just couldn't deal with the fallout. After spending some time working on her gut, she went from giving up on even the weakest forms of retinoids to tolerating prescription strength tretinoin every night with ease. And this is something I have seen more than once. It's because your gut isn't just about digestion. It's the control center for immune activity, for inflammation, and even your skin's barrier function. Research shows that one, if you have imbalanced bugs in your gut, they can contribute to low-grade inflammation, which makes your skin more sensitive and reactive. And two, some gut bugs even produce fatty acids and ceramides, which help to create that strong and resilient skin barrier. You want the right bugs to create a strong skin barrier so that you can tolerate active ingredients like retinoids with ease. Now for the avoidance of doubt there is currently no specific paper on gut health and retinoid tolerance but the evidence we do have strongly suggests a connection. So if you feel like you've tried everything to make retinoids work on the outside it might be worth switching your focus to the inside. The good news is it's pretty easy to work on this gut skin connection. It comes down to food, supplements, and barrier support. So let's talk about each of these. The first thing you want to do for great gut health and increased tolerance to retinoids is increase your intake of fiber rich foods. Fiber feeds your good bacteria, which in turn help to dial down inflammation and reinforce your skin barrier. The best sources of fiber include fruits and vegetables, pulses and legumes, and whole grains. And I usually tell people to aim to eat fruits and vegetables a few times a day and pulses and whole grains a few times a week. That will give you a great foundation. And if you need more convincing as to how powerful fiber can be, a study in Japanese women showed that the more colorful fruits and vegetables they ate, the smoother and less wrinkled their skin. That is the fiber boosting and smoothing their skin from the inside out. I have a whole video on fiber where I literally go through a day of eating, which I will pop there for you. The second thing you want to do is eat probiotic rich foods. Probiotic rich foods introduce more good bacteria, which again help to calm inflammation and enhance hydration. Great choices include fermented vegetables like kimchi and sauerkraut, and also drinks like kombucha and kefir. Research shows that kefir in particular can help to enhance enhanced skin's hydration, which shows that it's helping to strengthen that skin barrier. Aim to eat or drink at least one probiotic rich food every day. And if you want to try making your own kefir, which is what I do, I also have a video on that, which I will pop there. The third thing you want to do to optimize your gut environment and increase your skin's tolerance to retinoids is to dial up your intake of anti-inflammatory foods. Anti-inflammatory foods work as natural skin soothers, making your skin less sensitive and less reactive, particularly 
Additionally, powerful choices include oily fish like salmon and mackerel, and also dark coloured berries and green tea and herbs and spices like turmeric and also dark chocolates. Aim to eat one or more anti-inflammatory food daily. A good rule of thumb is anything that has a naturally rich or vibrant colour. Right, once we've got food covered, you can refine the effect even more by looking at supplements. And we have two main categories here, prebiotics and probiotics. Prebiotics are like fuel for good bacteria. Think of them like fertilizer to help your gut microbiome thrive. Now I find a particularly good prebiotic for skin health is galactolevosaccharides, which are more helpfully known as GOS. We have evidence to suggest that GOS can help to strengthen that all important skin barrier and it even has a gentle anti-wrinkle effect in its own right. You can find GOS in the supplement by Muno. It's a tasteless dissolvable powder so you can literally sprinkle it on your breakfast or stir it into your coffee. It's really easy to take. You can also explore probiotics which are the live friendly bacteria and as I said these can influence your skin's sensitivity and its hydration even when you take them by mouth. In terms of Strengthening that skin barrier to increase your skin's tolerance to retinoids and other actives, a really good probiotic strain is Lactobacillus paracasei ST11. The annoying thing is that this strain is weirdly hard to get hold of. I do know that you can find it in this product, which is available in some whole food stores in the US. If you can't find it, a good alternative is a probiotic that blends lots of different Lactobacillus and Bifidobacteria strains. We have lots of research to suggest that these can dial down that low-grade inflammation and therefore have a skin soothing effect. One like Biocults every day is a good all-rounder. With any supplement, you want to commit to taking it daily for at least three months before judging if it's having an effect. And while prebiotics and probiotics are generally considered to be very safe, please remember that this advice is not personalized to you. You must always check in with your doctor before you start any new supplements. Moving on to barrier support. So while you're working on the inside, there are things you can do on the outside too. First up is start gently. As I mentioned, there are lots of forms of retinoids or vitamin A in skincare. If you're new to this, start with the more gentle forms at the bottom of the ladder and work your way up. Now I have a video on how to do this, which includes specific product recommendations, and I will link that video there for you. And secondly, go slowly. Start with one night a week, then two, then three, then every other night and eventually nightly use. Your skin will give you feedback based on how it feels so you can kind of judge how quickly you can move up. And thirdly, moisturize smartly. Now I said at the start of this video that moisturizing isn't the whole solution and it's not, but it can be part of it. Though what I often see is people reaching for the wrong sorts of moisturizers. The key components of your skin barrier are ceramides, fatty acids, and cholesterol. These help to give you that calm, resilient, tolerant skin. So you want a moisturizer that gives you all three of these ingredients in the correct ratios. And not all moisturizers do that. Good examples of moisturizers that do contain these three critical components are the Xerofeet Barrier Repair Moisturizer, which is good for dry skin, the Xeroid Richnick Cream, which is good for very dry skin, the Mediture PSL Repair Moisturizer, which is good for normal to combination skin types, and the Skin 100 for Madagascar Centella Soothing Cream, which is a bit lighter, so good for oilier skin types. I will pop links to all of these in the video description box below for you. And the great thing is while you're working on things on the inside, you can use these to support that barrier on the outside. So if you've struggled with retinoid irritation, no matter how hard you try, it might be time to switch your focus to your gut, strengthen your microbiome and your skin will thank you. And with all of these tips, you want to stick with them for at least a month or two to give your skin time to respond. And as I said, with the supplements, particularly the probiotics, that might take closer to three months to really start working. And I know that tweaking what you eat maybe taking a supplement, experimenting with moisturizers, might seem like a lot of work just to incorporate a retinoid into your skincare routine. But I have two things to say on that. Firstly, if you care about your skin's long-term health and appearance, it really is worth getting a retinoid into your skincare routine consistently. They are one of the few evidence-based, truly effective skincare ingredients. And secondly, enhancing your gut health won't only affect your skin. It can have a knock-on effect on your mood, your sleep, and your overall health outlook. So retinoid or not, it is definitely worth incorporating some of these habits. 
So let me know in the comments if you've ever noticed a connection between your gut health and your skin. I would love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll like another one I've done on the ABC of skincare, which I will pop there for you. And thank you for watching until the very end.